This is Jiang and he's the number one pro gamer of all time. But he traded his professional lifestyle to gain the superpower of being able to win any girl over by boosting them with his elite gaming skills. So now he's about to become the number one clapper of all time as he spends all his day in internet cafe waiting for e-girls to show up. Eventually, he strikes gold as one of them challenges him to run down the mid lane one versus one, but she ends up getting absolutely rolled by the former rank one challenger god. Shortly after winning the duel, Jang goes up to the girl to claim his prize, which happens to be her, and so our journey finally starts with Jang initiating his Chad gamer mode. After redeeming his prize, Jang finds himself alone with the girl in a luxurious hotel, but it turns out he's actually an extra virgin olive oil bottle as he's never experienced a real-life gank before. Luckily for him, the girl gets impatient and calls him a noob, causing our boy to finally hurry up and grab some fresh glazed donuts right before him. After grabbing hold on them Krispy Kreme donuts, he accidentally hears a sussy sound, but the girl lets him know that's just what donuts sounds like, so our boy starts to think donuts come with built-in speakers. After learning that he could probably play dubstep on them, he starts cosplaying his childlike self and proceeds to yoink and sculpt the donuts like it's some kind of Play-Doh, since he's a noob after all. So our boy literally plays around with them for the entire 15 minutes he's allowed to make contact with the gigantic mochi balls, but then he hits the jackpot. Using his big brain, he's able to figure out that under the terms of the duel, he can actually weaponize the same part of his body that he uses to flame people on voice chat. So the girl realizes she's in trouble now, but rules are rules and she's actually sticking true to her word, so our boy starts treating the vanilla donuts like it's turned into the last Oreo McFlurry available for McDonald's. And as he treats the ice cream cone without any ounce of respect, lightning electrifies his brain cells telling him it's now time for him to evolve into his final form, the Chad Gamer. As such, our boy closes his eyes, which isn't very Sigma at all, just so he could start reaching with his Logitech hand to enter the promised land of the zipped-up catacombs. But to his surprise, he hears the girl say, do it, causing him to stop in his tracks and start staring at her bedazzled. After noticing that he stopped leveling up towards his pursuit of greater glory, she tells him to stop being a hard-stuck iron as it's time for him to straight vibe into Radiant. And so he dives straight in with his dominant side, and our boy is able to quickly show the Goldie why he's a former Rank 1 pro, by showcasing his tremendous mechanical skills using his model o mouse. His pro gamer skills is so superb that it allowed him to seamlessly translate some of his stat points into his clapping skills, allowing for Miss Donut Girl to ask Jan to withdraw her lightweight pants from her inventory immediately. And so mission complete, our boy has now completed the achievement of witnessing not only his first donut ever, but also of his first ever papaya, but the unlock comes with a catch that Jang needs to reveal his banana tree plantation. To make it fair and to prove he's all about women's rights and equality, he decides to comply with her request and proceeds to reveal his legendary baron to the Sentinels fan. Upon the revelation of his true hidden power, boss music starts to play as the girl figures out that his true identity is faker, since no man can compete with a prince behemoth like his. Our boy then gets flustered and gets embarrassed upon revealing his faker, since it's made the girl recall back to base slowly, so he starts thinking that maybe he forgot to take a shower last night after some ranked games. Eventually, the girl comes back to Lane and tells Jang there's absolutely nothing wrong with his faker, but it's more so her fault as she just doesn't even know if faker can fit in her mid lane. However, our boy interrupts her while she's busy pondering if his faker can fit during her laning phase, telling her that she can just check by drinking his Slurpee, since that's what all the main characters do when he reads those sussy books. Initially, he was actually just trolling her, but he gets shocked as he watches her go through with his game plan of her drinking the Baron juice, as she shows off her expert abilities. Eventually, Jang yells out he's sorry right before Faker is unable to flawlessly dodge her attacks, so Faker ends up exploding within Team Mouth, but Faker's Israel skill shots miss the target and leave a mess all over. Now that Faker lost game one of the best of five series, Jang attacks for game two, as his Faker was revived instantly even after exploding like some kind of Mega Chad. Now taken by surprise that a rookie is able to instantly recover and be ready for game two of the finals for Rice Cake Smashing, his opponent tells him to wait as she never expected him to be so overpowered. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Jang is able to channel some of his Riz God 9000 skills he learned from watching some bald guy on YouTube, he finds it actually works. To his amazement and without him even saying a single word, the enemy team tells Jang that she's given him the green light to invade her gamer girl walls with his challenger battering ram. Now truth be told, the gamer girl absolutely gets demolished by Jang's raw talent since he got gifted for being a gamer god, since when he grows up, that's all he's going to be, just an ex-gamer. But for now, he's not only just a gamer god, but it turns out he's able to awaken his taming god skills as he's able to successfully tame an a-girl with the use of his faker powers. 
Shortly after losing game two of the finals, Jang starts to get embarrassed as he notices his opponent starts look a bit startled again, since his faker instantly recovers and comes out swinging in full force. So now it's time for game three, and with it finally underway, the crowd starts chanting for Team Jang to do an ultimate comeback, but unfortunately, Faker gets the first blood sending Team Gamer Girl into a frenzy. And within just a couple seconds, Team Jang is actually looking like he's about to finally win a game, as Team Gamer Girl starts yelling the unpredictable. Long story short, Jang wins game three as his opponent is the first to explode in battle, leaving her feeling absolutely dazed and bulldozed by the longtime champion. So now that he's actually tamed the wild e-girl by leaving his opponent totally in bliss, our boy realizes that his journey to becoming the rank 1 clapper of all time has now started with outstanding success. After cleaning up their duel arena together, our bro discovers he's so overpowered that his first tamed summon instantly runs away after making it out of the hotel. Bro was so successful that he didn't even get the chance to ask for her number after three rice cake destroying sessions in one day, but it's totally okay, as it's time for him to head home. A few days then pass after the crazy ordeal, where Jang heads back to his usual non-professional gamer self-routine of going to school and back home every day, but now he has memory flashes of the successful night he had. Now I don't blame him as the dude completely took over the match and allowed himself to taste the glorious paradise of being the ultimate duelist by going full send the entire time. Regardless, as he daydreams about his previous encounter, his friend Minsu calls him and asks our boy if he can carry him tomorrow after school. Unfortunately for the bronze new, Jang tells him he's busy tomorrow even though he truly wishes to be there for him, as destroying noobs gives him an adrenaline rush that can't be compared to anything else. Anyways, Jang continues home a little bit disappointed that he can't go smurf on some noobs tomorrow, but then his eye catches the attention of a bunch of people crowding a popular looking girl. He then then stares and makes a salty remark regarding how life of a pretty girl must be super fun as she doesn't even have to try and everyone will fall heads over heels to appease them. However, as our boy continues to stare at her looking absolutely jealous, the girl catches him being hawk-eyed, so she runs over to him looking like she's about to call them out. Much to Jang's surprise, she's not here to belittle him or anything, but instead, she blindsides him and asks if he has a moment for her to speak with him. Of course, our boy does not hesitate to agree as he starts to think word might be going around the female population, that he's superbly skilled in more ways than meets the eye. But as soon as they sit on a bench to talk, his confidence drops to zero, so he starts panicking that he accidentally agreed to some monk or missionary trying to recruit him to their religion. Luckily for Jang, right before he decides to run away, the girl mentions that he probably doesn't remember her, so she whips out her pair of glasses and tries to explain that she was at the internet cafe the day before. As such, it finally dawned on our boy that the nerdy-looking friend is actually her, so he gets shocked at how much makeup can really alter and change someone's appearance. Jang immediately apologizes for not recognizing her, but we all know Bro is now super scared to take home a girl that's actually a 2 out of 10 in disguise, even though they look like a goddess in the morning. Nevertheless, after learning that the girl he encountered the other night was named Hyuna, he starts entering his defensive stance as he thinks the girl is only here to talk to him just so she could expose his deeds. With her eyes starting to droop inquisitively, she begins asking Jang if the two ended up carrying her punishment for losing to him on that fateful day. This causes our boy to instantly react negatively, as he starts thinking that the cat may now be out of the bag, somehow scared that people might find out he's on the global clapping leaderboards. Nonetheless, the turntables turn as it's revealed that Hyuna kept their fateful day secret from her own best friend, so Jang starts feeling a wave of relief enter his body. But then, the disguised nerd starts questioning how a silver boy can effortlessly defeat Hyuna. Even though she's just a goldie, she outplays her rank during one versus ones. Before our boy could answer any of her questions, the nerd drops the bomb by claiming she's thoroughly analyzed and watched hand cams from players like Faker and Shroud, so she knows he's hiding his true identity. She then calls him out by claiming that his mechanical skills can only be matched by those who used to be pro, so she comes to the conclusion Jang must be washed now since he carries Randy's for pocket money. As such, our boy breaks down and starts sweating profusely, thinking that the nerd only showed up to make fun of him and to reveal his true identity to the world. However, the girl interrupts Jang by explaining to him that she's not here to do anything like that, since what she truly needs is a gamer Chad that can carry her to newfound heights. She then continues on by asking if Jang would be interested in making a lot of money by pub stomping wannabe pro players, but no matter, he ends up taking her offer. Fast forward to the later on the day, the girl shows Jang the entrance to this super mysterious club where gamers wager on who's better, but the entrance happens to be a basement. Now if I was Jang, I would be a little suspicious, this is about to turn sussy, if a girl brings you in broad daylight to someone's basement. 
Regardless, the two venture on forward until they reach a dead end where Jang is greeted by a sign welcoming him to Hanja University's gaming club called the Gaming Hell. So there's for sure a bunch of chads hiding behind the door. But then, upon opening the door, there was no chads to be seen. Instead, there's a bunch of girls using invisibility potions on their clothes, including Hyuna herself. Now, this sight was crazy enough to stun lock both Hyuna's friend and Jang, as even I got surprised, as no one expected the sussy Inquisition to take over behind a university gaming club.